Now, with the festive season well underway, there's one British pastime that keeps the flights burning bright during those long winter nights. And that's the Christmas panto. Catmo has more. We're in Glasgow, where Scotland's premium pantomime dame is treading the boards in her 25th panto season. It's basically a good night out, which is the most important thing, or a good afternoon out, full of laughs and joy, eh, sort of hitched on to a traditional fairy tale love story. It's usually kids' first experience of theatre. So we're, we're the sort of gateway, <laughs> if you like. There's hundreds of years of tradition in Panto, from audience participation... Those gullible fools who believe anything I tell them, oh yes they will. Oh, yes, they will! To a host of stock characters. Panto Dame was generally a man dressed as a woman, and that allowed uh, men to come out and do really outrageous impersonations of women. It's quite unusual to be a woman playing it. I'm one of very few allowed to. Um, maybe in the past women have been forced into being the more glamorous type. And my thing is it's not about whether you're a man or woman, it's the type of performer you are. If you can break through and uh, the, to the audience and say, I'm about to make a fool of myself here, come with me. Could it find a petrol station? We ended up wandering through this barren, desolate wasteland. Oh, Who was that? I think it was Paisley. <laughs> It's a great quote by a wonderful panto performer, Jerry Kelly, who I worked with here many times. Pantomime is a celebration of local culture. You said it, something like, we've set this in Clydeside, which is, you know, obviously Glasgow, but making it local, having all those references in it, and making it of the place that generally the audience are from. It's a big business across the UK. Pre-pandemic theatres sold around three million panto tickets a year, and Glasgow has a special affection for it. Among the dozens of venues staging a production is this wee treasure hidden above an amusement arcade. You're in the Britannia Panopticon Music Hall. It's the oldest surviving original music hall in the world. Music halls are basically places where the working classes used to go when they finished their working day to be entertained by dancers, singers, novelty acts, contortionists, high wire acts, you name it. You know, music halls were one of the places where you would see a pantomime. Pantomime was the only sort of theatre that was like variety, all in the one production. Glasgow has a long-standing theatre tradition. A recent poll found it was one of the British cities with the most theatres outside London. And back when the Panopticon opened in the 1850s, working-class Glaswegian audiences were already developing a bit of a reputation. Stanley Baxter actually wrote about the music hall in his own bedside book and he actually said that they left no turn unstoned. They had spent money to get in here. If the act on that stage was not good enough, Believe me, they knew about it. Boys used to urinate from the front of the balcony onto the stage to hit the act on the stage below. You had men in the back of the auditorium throwing shipyard rivets, nails, punches, screws. They became popular with the famous acts because if they could get away with it on the stages in Glasgow, they could get away with their routine anywhere in the world. Luckily, things have quietened down a bit since then. But Glasgow audiences are still a famously lively bunch. For me, if I was going to go and see Panto, I'd come here because of the audience. Uh, in Glasgow, there is a great tradition of audiences joining in. Sometimes, whether you want or not, they might <laughs> I do question myself, why am I keeping doing it? I'm a granny now, <laughs> I'm 64. Why would you go out? So for me, it allows me to walk in the light and push the light out. It gives people a good night out. It's a great leveler as well, because you've got 
You've got people who work for the government and you've got people who are, uh, who are cleaners. They're all experiencing the same thing. And there are so few places we can go now where you know, 2,000 people can gather. So to be part of that still after all the, these years makes it all worth it.